Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Terry Briggs. And I'm Don Johnson. It's time to start thinking about the next city election. The May 14th election includes three city council seats, District 1, District 3, and District 7 at large. The winners will serve three-year terms. Candidates have until March 14th to file the necessary paperwork with the city secretary. They must be a resident of Texas for 12 months and a resident of their district for six months, 45 days prior to the election. Voters have until April 14th to register and be able to cast a ballot. For more information, go to the city's website at gptx.org or call the city secretary at 972-237-8035. Remember this? How about this? Well, now we're dealing with this. Potholes. The ice, snow, and sub-freezing temperatures put the herd on pavement across the city. So now street crews are working as fast as possible to patch the cracks and crevices created by the storm. Over the last uh, six days, we've uh, fixed over 4,000 potholes, which is about uh, 30 tons of uh, cold mix. Uh, we've gotten some new refreshed deliveries in, so we're still ready. Uh, we still have two crews out working full time um, during the day fixing uh, potholes. They're driving all the thoroughfares first, and then they're hitting the residential streets from there. Bates says drivers are encouraged to report any sizable potholes online at the city's website or by phone at the pothole hotline. I got a question. Uh, I'm underage and they're trying to ride me inside. I'm going to pay you the money to make me a bow on it. Grand Prairie Police continue to make progress in their effort to curb teenage drinking. According to the latest report from the Underage Drinking Task Force, fewer businesses are serving minors. Investigators looked at 489 establishments that sell alcohol. They found 38 had served minors, which translates into a non-compliance rate of 7.7 percent. Last year, the city's non-compliance rate was 9 percent. Word is getting out. People realize that Grand Prairie, we are very proactive in this area, and we are seeking out violators in these areas. And, and uh, just the baseline communication and the fact that people are aware that we exist, uh, that's causing the rates to drop as well. During the year, police do retail compliance checks, undercover shoulder taps, party patrols, and special events operations looking for illegal purchases of alcohol by minors. And they partner with Drug Prevention Resources Incorporated to spread the word through public service videos and other publicity. The garden at the Kirby Creek Nature Center is getting a makeover. On Saturday, volunteers helped tear out the old planting beds and get the garden ready for some new user-friendly improvements. What basically is happening is that this is going to be a new, brand new garden. Uh, it's going to have accessible for ADA and that will allow access to a lot more people because they're going to be raised beds. As you can see around you, these are originally all flat beds, so people actually had to kneel down, bend down, and so forth. This will allow wheelchair access. The popular garden is used by the Grand Prairie Independent School District to teach environmental science. It's also a classroom for adults who want to become master composters. If you want to learn more about the Kirby Creek Garden, go online at grandfundgp.com or call 972-237-8100. Grand Prairie is turning to a public-private partnership to add two new playgrounds on the north and south side of the city. The northern site is located at Pine and 25th Street, on land once used as clear space by the Naval Air Station. Local students will help design the 2,500 square foot playground. This will actually be younger age group, elementary to two junior high age students. Uh, colors will be different, but the pipe and deck frame structure will be very similar to that at Charlie Taylor. The city is teaming up with the nonprofit organization Kaboom on the Pine Street project. Volunteers will help build it on Saturday, April 30th. The south side site is on land next to the Fish Creek Trail near Carrier and Crossland. The playground will be formed from concrete, steel, and recycled plastic to create a very different kind of setting. The design is going to entail a theme of Grand Prairie's 1880. 
and what one would typically find if they traveled back in time and visited Grand Prairie during that time period. We've got a, a tree fort made, uh, designed with native wood, uh, pecan trees, cedar. Um, we've got a log cabin made of the same materials. Uh, we've got two facades that the kids can play with, one being a jail and one being a schoolhouse. Ninth grade students helped create the Frontier design and will join other volunteers to build the playground on Saturday, May 14th. For more information about the playground projects or to volunteer, contact the Parks Department online at grandfundgp.com or call 972-237-8100. <laughs> Singing, poetry, and other talent was on display Saturday during the city's 7th annual African American Heritage Celebration. Tell us where the movers are. Please speak. Oh, speak, Musa Tell us. Tell us. The event is designed to illustrate the African American experience through artistic expression. Togas, sandals, and laughter are waiting for you at the Uptown Theater. It's all part of a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. The comedy follows a crafty Roman slave who is trying to win his freedom by winning the hand of a beautiful but slow-witted female for his young master. The Grand Prairie Arts Council production runs Thursday through Sunday from now until February 27. For tickets and showtimes, go to the Uptown's website or call 972-237-UPTN. Grand Prairie is offering local artists a chance to showcase their talents with a contest for the city's next holiday ornament and a new competition at Market Square. The 2011 Holiday Ornament Contest is strictly for youngsters. Anyone aged 19 and younger can enter a design. The entries are due no later than April 29th. A panel of judges will select the best design and the winner receives a complimentary ornament. First Lady Janice England started the ornament contest in 2004 and all proceeds from sales go to local charities. For more information about the ornament contest, go to the city's website at gptx.org or call 972-237-8086. The Market Square contest happens on May 21st and is open to both youngsters and adults. The City and the Grand Prairie Arts Council are sponsoring the competition as part of a new art show. All hanging media will be considered including oil, acrylic, watercolor, pastel, mixed media, drawing, and photography. Artwork should focus on the theme Farmer's Market and or Market Square. Cash prizes for first, second, and third place and best of show will be awarded in both student and adult categories. And the winning creations will be displayed every Saturday when the farmer's market is open. For entries and rules, go online at artsgp.com or call 972-642-2787. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Remember, you can also watch all our Channel 16 programs by going to the city website at gptx.org slash gptv.